Hey friends, in this very special episode of Computer Things They Didn't Teach You, we'll take some viewer mail and we'll talk about something that maybe is a little less technical, but still, in my opinion, is something that they don't really teach you. I got a really nice message on my Instagram here. I thought it was going to go to junk mail, but I found it. I dug it out of my Instagram from a very nice gentleman in Ethiopia named Abbas Tofuk. And he says, I'm a beginner C-sharp programmer. I try to make simple apps like a calculator. I start writing the code and I get exhausted. I see your videos. We have lots of code and lots of classes. What's the secret? I get distracted. I get stuck. I try to fix it. I get more errors. I get stressed. I stop coding it. Please give me your advice. And I think that that's a really common thing. I think that that is generally getting overwhelmed overwhelmed with the solution, overwhelmed with all the things that we have to learn in tech. This happens to people who are new in their career and people like me who've been doing this for many years. What do you do when you're completely overwhelmed? Well, I've got a couple of tips. Some of them are squishy and some of them are not squishy. Let's go over them. This is a silly tip. You might say, set up your space. Why are you telling me this, Scott? What a silly thing to talk about. Well, Setting up your space means being intentional, being deliberate. How are you writing your code? This isn't about getting a bunch of fancy stuff or lighting or, you know, a cool YouTube camera. This is not about having a great laptop. It's about thinking about the space that you're in while you're doing this work. If it's a laptop, are you someone who's gonna sit with low posture? That's okay. But are you doing it because it just happened? Or did you concentrate and say, this feels the best. I do my best work when I sit like this. Are you someone who needs to sit up straight, like me? I don't just sit like this for no reason. I thought about it. I thought about my posture. I thought about my shoulders. I thought about where I fit. I thought to myself, this is where my hand should be. And this is where I do my best work because I can do it for long periods of time without hurting myself. You only have these hands. So setting up your space, I call it nesting. You can take a look at a blog post that I've written called setting up your nest. Cancel the nesting. Talk about the importance of nesting when you're doing remote working and figuring out how to set up your, net, your nest. Can you sit comfortably? Can you work comfortably? Um, when you are stressed out, are the things that are around you, do they feed your spirit? I've got just within reach, I've got my little Nintendo Super Mario. I've got my, my Link from Zelda. These are stupid little things that sit on my desk that remind me what I'm, what I'm into. I can feel them when I'm stressed out. I have set up my space around me intentionally. It could be a picture of your family. It doesn't matter. The second thing is your digital space. We're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail. Uh, organizing your windows, setting up your hotkeys, getting your space organized within, you know, Visual Studio Code or whatever you're deciding to use. Setting that up is important. And when you are setting up your space, you want to think about it in the context of what I'm calling the developer's inner loop. At Microsoft, they talk about the developer's inner loop at all, a lot. You know, you have four loops, right? They spin. Well, the developer's inner loop is do some code and see it work. Do some code and see it work. So how do you set those things up? I'll give you uh, an example. Now I'll, I'll give you an example in .NET, which is the language that I like to use, but it doesn't really matter. You can do this in, in any language that you want. So let's go and make a directory. We'll just call it uh, Fancy Pants. And I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna make a new website. So I'm just gonna make a new website. So I've typed my, my new web and again, Node, PHP, doesn't matter. Okay. And I could say .NET run, and it's going to go and run this website. And now it's running. Now, what do I have to do? Well, now I got to go and open up the browser, and I got to go to the browser location. And then I've got my stuff there. So then I need to think about, well, how do I make a change to this code? Right? I make a change to the code, and then I need to do what? stop this, run it again, go back over here, hit refresh, and I do that over and over and over again. So maybe I'll open up Notepad. 
and I'll look at my program. But now I get three different windows on the screen and everything's getting all crazy. What's going on here? And then I say, make a change. Save. Come over here. Run it again. Come over here. Hit refresh. A lot. That's obnoxious. So what can I do to make this cleaner? So I just set up some zones here. Now I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to drop each of the things that I'm working on into a zone. That's called fancy zones. That's really called a window manager. Doesn't matter whether you have Windows, Mac, or Linux, there's a window manager available to you. Okay, so that's interesting. So I've got my space organized here. I'm going to close this. I'm going to say, instead of .NET Run, I'm going to say .NET Watch Run. It's called a file watcher. Every language has some kind of file watcher. If they don't, you can actually find a utility that will do that for you. So now when I make a change, it's watching. I'm going to hit Hello Friends now. I'm going to hit Control S. Watch at the top right here. Now I can come down here and just hit Refresh. Now the only thing I could do now to make this even simpler would be to come up with a way to have this auto refresh. And I could go and put in a meta tag or a little bit of JavaScript and I could have that refresh, you know, whenever. Totally up to you. But just by changing that to include a file watcher, everything got faster. Hello. This is better. Control S. Starts building. Down here. Refresh. So I'm making that inner loop faster. If I could remove that refresh, it would be even faster. That's the kind of thing you want to be thinking about. But the problem is, we don't think about such things. We get stuck being repetitive. Because you're focused on the problem and not on your space. But the trick is, once you see yourself doing something twice, see if you can maybe automate it. Once you've done something five times or ten times, could it be a, a script or a batch file? Could it be something that you could automate? There's tools like Auto Hotkey. This one uh, watch example. There are others in the same space. Over here, I know that there is a tool called Watch Exec. Software development involves running the same commands over and over and over. That's boring. It watches a path and runs a command whenever it detects mod modifications. That's a thing to think about, a thing you can do to, to improve your developer's inner loop. So you spend less time with what I call administrivia, administrative trivia, and more time actually coding. The other thing that I think people don't think enough about are editor skills. I was using Notepad, which probably was not awesome. I could actually come back over here and let's uh, switch this and we'll use Visual Studio Code. I've got another video about this as well you should check out. I'll have links down here in the show notes. If I bring up Visual Studio Code, put it over here, and I'm using Windows left arrow to keep it over here while I'm over here on the, uh, on the right hand side. One of the things that's worth pointing out about a tool like Visual Studio Code that I really like when I get stressed out is I can do two things. One, I can zoom in and out, which allows me to either see all the source code, or I can zoom in and I can see less. I actually make my fonts bigger so I can focus on these 20 lines, which I find to be very helpful. It lets me be, helps me be less stressed out. But multi caret editing. Carrot is C-A-R-E-T. The carrot is this little thing. It's this little eye bar that sits and it tells you flashing where your text is going to go. You usually get one carrot, right? If I click here and I start typing, I get some, uh, some text, right? But I can hold down Alt with one finger. I could say click. Click, 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 click. Now I've got six carrots. I can control Z. This is a test. 
and I'm actually typing in six different places. That can be really, really, really helpful if you need to do anything repetitive, and then you just hit escape to go back to just one caret. Additionally, I can double click on a word, hold down alt, double click, double click. Now I've got three carrots and a selection, and I can change them. So it doesn't matter whether you use Visual Studio Code or whether you use Emacs or Vim or whatever makes you happy. The point is though, think about the three or four or five things that you could memorize, put them on a post-it note right in front of you, and think about, you know, I'm finding myself clicking around looking for things a lot, or I'm finding myself click, type, click, type, click, type. Maybe I could be a little more efficient, and then spend a little time streamlining your experience, and I think you'll, you'll feel better about your, your editing skills. Window management, I talked a little bit about power toys there. We'll do that again just very briefly. Got a couple of different windows here. I can hold down shift. You see I've set up multiple regions. So rather than spending time doing this, you see how that's kind of a hassle? I can hold down shift and I can go snap, snap, snap. That's just one example, totally configurable, okay? Some people think you need to learn all the hotkeys. You don't. You just need to learn the ones that keep you from repeating yourself a lot. So hotkeys that are useful to know are ones that allow you to move windows around on your screen, like I'm doing here. And that's just windows up, down, left, right. Um, things like Alt-Tab to bring a window in the front and then Alt-Tab to make it go away. Or modifiers, holding down Alt, holding down Control, holding down Shift to get different behaviors. So you're using one hand on the mouse and one hand on the keyboard. That can get you thinking more about your terminals, your shells, your command line interface, your CLI. And that, is that easy to move around? So if I bring back my terminal, I'll make it fill the left-hand side of the screen here. I can click in it. I'm gonna hold down Alt with my left thumb and I'm gonna click on Ubuntu. And now I've got two shells. I can then click again and I could open up DOS and now I've got three. I can use Control Scroll, make my mice, make my text larger or smaller. And then I can hit Control W, which is the same hotkey that you use in your browser to close a tab to go close, close, and now I'm back here. That's the Windows terminal. I only held down Alt and clicked and I hit Control W. So once you get that as a natural uh, feeling in, uh, in the martial arts, they will call that like a kata. If you can get it down to a standard series of moves that you're used to doing, you can bring those things up very, very quickly and you can make them go away very quickly, okay? You gotta practice that thing. You gotta sit down and you have to do it intentionally. The other thing I think about is, are, are you able to move around your windowing environment as fast as you can move around your command line? And can you move between the two? So for example, I'm here at the command line in the fancy pants folder. I can type start dot. And that'll automatically pop up, uh, actually over on this monitor, that folder, which I can then snap and snap. I can get between these two worlds quickly by saying start dot, which is the current, the current location. There it is. And then if I wanted to, I could go back to the command line. I can right click and I can say open in prompt. Not having to think about it saves you time because then you can really focus on the problem. The other thing that I feel really strongly about is having little tools, having them be easy, be small, be everywhere. Now I use Dropbox, and in my Dropbox, I have a folder called Utils. And in that is a bunch of, wait for it, Utils. The zooming tool that I use to draw, and you know, wget to get stuff from the web, and free clipboard viewer, and a, a batch file to set my resolution to 1080p. It's full of little executables. And that's cool, but it's not really cool unless it's in my path, unless it's available in my path, which is an environment variable that we set on our machines to make things available to us. So I've actually got that set in my path 
And it is right there. Now, why is that interesting? Because it's set in my path on every computer that I have. So if I get a new utility, I throw it into utils, and it's available to me on a laptop and on my desktop, because I have the path set, and I have Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive set up on both of those things. That way, a little utility that I start using is available everywhere. It's accessible, which is super useful. So what I'm asking you to do, and what I'm asking my new friend to do when you're overwhelmed is to start nesting. Be deliberate. It's okay to do that. You just sit. You go, okay, what's, what's going on? What am I doing? I'm overwhelmed. Are there too many windows open? Maybe there's too many tabs. Maybe I need to declare tab bankruptcy. Close all my tabs. Um, I like to sync to paper. When I get overwhelmed staring at my screens, I pull out my little Super Mario Moleskin notebook, and I get away from the screen, and I write down what it is I'm trying to do. I phrase it differently. There's another thing called rubber ducking, where you get a rubber duck or anything. You could get a little, uh, maybe some people use rubber ducks, and some people use a, a Gundam, a little robot man. Um, and you explain the problem to them. Okay, okay, I'm trying to reverse sort a linked list. And then you just explain it. And in the process of getting it out of your mouth, back into your ears, into your brain, you can solve the problem, explaining it to even a non-technical uh, partner, spouse, or roommate, something that you can do. Another thing that you need to do is really set up systems where you can make yourself successful. If you've decided that you're going to learn to code, except you're going to do it eight hours a day, you know, 40 hours, 50 hours a week, it's a really hard thing to do. I'm like, I like to blog, but I don't like to blog every single day because if I miss one, I feel bad. I try to set up systems where I can succeed, and not systems where I can, I can fail. Now, again, I know that about myself. You need to know yourself. Have you set up a space? Have you set up your, your keyboard? Have you set up your mouse? Have you set up your windows? Are you coding at the right time of the day? Nighttime, morning time? Do you need to go for a walk? Do you need to have a person with you where you can do pair programming? What is it that you need to do to move yourself forward? What I'm asking you to do is be intentional and be focused and do things for a reason. Don't just let things happen. Okay? So there's a lot when we think about being overwhelmed. And I would encourage you to sound off in the comments. If you've been overwhelmed, what is it that you've done, whether it be writing some software, working on a script, deploying something as an IT professional, what, is you, what have you done to get unoverwhelmed, to turn the volume down, whether it be uh, setting up your environment, automating your environment, learning about containers, learning about virtual machines, spending a moment and not thinking about this program and instead learning a new hotkey in your favorite tool, maybe watching a YouTube. Sound off in the comments. Tell me what you thought about this video. And uh, next week, we'll have a video on of the cloud and some of the computer things that they didn't teach you when programming things in the cloud. Thanks so much.